Okay, come here, let me tell you a secret. Some of the best types of card tricks are self-working. And you'll get the best reactions in magic when people have some level of interactivity with your effect. But what if I told you there was a way to combine a self-working card trick with spectator interactivity to give you the best effect that you can learn immediately? You'd probably think I'm lying. Well, let's find out. Here we go. For those of you who are curious, by the way, these are the Chancers V3 prototype playing cards by Good Pals, sent to me by my friends at The Card Inn. If you wanna pick up this deck for yourself, boom. Link to it will be right in the description. And there's a special secret about this deck that I'll talk about later in the tutorial. All right, yo, so check this out. We're gonna start off by first giving the deck a quick little shuffle, maybe just something like this, and that should be hopefully good enough. And maybe a couple of cuts because that's what people are comfortable seeing. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to split this deck into three equal piles. So let's break off a third, put it here, break off another third, and put it right over there. And it's gonna be unbelievable how this works. So that's approximately a third, and we'll get half of this packet, which is a third as well. So now we have pile one, two, and three. Pile one was originally the top third of the deck. And chances are most magicians, they know what the top card is, so I'm not gonna have you pick that card. And same thing here with the bottom third. Chances are a magician really knows what the bottom card is. But the packet that you cut here in the center, you could have literally cut it anywhere. So this is a completely free choice. I want you to take a look and remember this top card. Let's say we have two spectators for this trick. Spectator number one is gonna take a look and remember this top card right here. Once you have this card memorized, we're gonna take it back, put it in this packet, and the spectator can shuffle it up as much as they want. Being the performer, I could even have my eyes closed or be hiding somewhere as the spectator does this. So they've literally lost that card in this packet. Now, like I said, this was the original top third of the deck. So uh, what I want you to do, instead of taking the top card of this one, I want you to shuffle it up as much as you'd like. And then I want you to pick out any card that you want from the center of the deck, or even the top card, whatever you want to do. Pick out any card that you want, take a look at it, and memorize it. All right, and again, the spectator number two is doing this. So we have spectator number one's card and spectator number two's card. We'll take that and leave it on top. Now, since I want to lose this top card here, or since I want to lose the spectator number two's card in the deck, I'll put this on the bottom. We'll take the, I guess, original bottom packet, put it here, and we're going to take the original middle packet and put it right on top. So there's no possible way I know where your selected card is. But this is where it gets amazing. Because watch, sometimes I have the ability to read cards. Not all the time, but sometimes. If you just listen, the cards sometimes reveal themselves. Wait for it. Okay. I think I got a sense of what the first card was. I'm, I'm going to say this was the first selected card. And now for the second one, I'm gonna say, well, obviously it can't be that far in. The second one, so I think it's this card right here. <sighs> okay, now if I did this correctly, spectator number one selected one card and spectator number two selected another card. Spectator number one, what was the card? 10 of spades, there it is. Spectator number two, the two of spades, and there we have it. Pure magic, let's go. What up crew, it is Magic Monday and this is your place to learn magic, mastery your performance and captivate audiences. The effect that I'm sharing with you today is known as Thought Echo by Sam Schwartz. The first time I read about this card trick, I was skeptical if this would even work. It felt like one of those moments in life when someone kind of does this to you. Hey man, you gotta do it. I don't know, dude, I don't know if I could do it. Trust me, bro, you gotta do this. <sighs> okay. Ah! Okay, well not that exact situation, but you know what I mean. This is one of those card tricks. So before we dive into the tutorial, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, grab your favorite deck of playing cards, these if you can get them, and now let's do it. The way in which this card trick works just actually blows my mind. Like it's, it's unreal. I did not think it would work. And then when I tried it, it actually worked. I'm like, whoa best self-working card trick ever. Now, before I start this tutorial, there was a secret about this deck that I was gonna tell you. The Chancers V3 playing cards are marked with a cool and discreet marking system. So I definitely recommend you guys to get your hands on these. Like I said, the link to it will be in the description. And if you use the code card mechanic, you will get 15% off. I got you hooked up. But don't worry, this card trick does not need a marked deck to work. So grab your deck and let's do this. Okay, so first things first, this card trick does require a little bit of a setup. So what I want you to do is I want you to grab your favorite suit, all 13 cards of that suit. I'm just gonna grab the spades because sp spades are cool. So I want you to go ahead and just pull out 13 cards of your selected suit. And like I said, this card trick can be done pretty much immediately. So if you follow along, you will literally get it done, all right? So you have those uh, 13 cards of your selected suit. Now I want you to stack them up in order. So we have ace followed by two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. All right, so once you have all 13 cards, 
Now I want you to count off 11 cards from the deck. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. Right, so now you have the rest of the deck left. Take the 13 cards that you set up with the ace, right, is on top. Put that face down on top of the deck. Take the rest of these cards right here, put that on top. So the way that the setup looks is we have 11 in different cards. Then starting with the ace, we have all the way through king, and then we have the rest of the deck. Uh, with this done, you're pretty much ready to get started with this effect. Now, whenever you're performing a setup card trick, or any card trick for that matter, you always want the deck shuffled. Of course, a spectator can't shuffle up this deck because then that would ruin the whole thing. So I'd highly recommend you to learn any kind of false shuffle or cuts that you'd like to use. One of my favorite go-tos is uh, this false cut here where I cut off about a third of the deck, put it in my hand, cut off about another third, get a break underneath that third that I just cut off, take this, uh, I guess technically the bottom third that was left, put it down, put that down, put that down, and doing it up to speed, it looks super believable. It blows my mind how well it looks and you'll see the cards are still maintained. So as long as um, these top couple of cards or top third of the deck is not disturbed, you can shuffle up the bottom half as much as you like. So go ahead, choose any kind of shuffle that you want. I personally like using the full deck false shuffle. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have a tutorial on it. I'll put the link to the screen. It requires a decent amount of practice, but if you wanna learn it, it's so worth it. So anyway, you're performing this card trick. You give the deck a couple of uh, false shuffles, false cuts, whatever you wanna do. And now from this point on, this entire thing happens with the spectator. So you give them the deck, and if you want, if you feel comfortable, like if it's a spectator who follows instructions, you can close your eyes, wear a blindfold, do whatever you want, and it's unreal how well this card trick works. So first thing you instruct them to do is exactly what I did in my performance. Cut off about a third of the deck and uh, place it, let's say, over here. We'll call this packet or pile A. All right, so pile A, about a third of the deck, it's actually a bit more, but uh, let's say pile A, about a third of the deck, that's, that's a bit less, whatever. Uh, so they cut off about a third of the deck there, and then they take half of the remaining packet and let's say we'll put it here. We'll call this packet A, we'll call this packet B, and we'll call this packet C. And the way that I'm gonna differentiate it just to make it easier for you, packet A is closest to the top, packet B is in the center, packet C is on the bottom. But of course, you don't have to lay it out like this, you can lay it out however you want, as long as the spectator knows what packet to go to. So what I like to explain to the spectator is that this is the top portion of the packet that you cut, this is the bottom portion of the packet that you cut. That means wherever you cut to, that was completely free choice, and I want you to take a look at this top card that you cut to. Now, if they did this correctly, the top card they cut to is going to be a spade. In our case, it is the five of spades. Obviously, you have no idea what this card is, but you tell them to look at this card, put it back um, onto this packet, and then shuffle it up, right? This is what blows me away because they can literally pick a card and shuffle it up, and it's just like, wait, what just happened? There's no possible way you know what that card is. Once that's done, you reiterate, you reiterate to the spectator that you probably know what this top card is if you were any kind of magician. So, uh, you want them to shuffle up packet A, shuffle up packet A as much as they want. Then they can take a look. It, you could, I guess, usually what I do is I tell them to take out any card that they want, or you can even tell them just take a look at the top card. Let's just do that. And this happens to be the three of spades. So first card I believe was the five of spades. This is the three of spades. I really should have just remembered it. I don't know if I have my, my memory's fading me. So anyway, the first card selected was the five of spades. The second card selected was the three of spades. And ideally this card trick works best when you have at least two spectators. This way each spectator can do something different and it's easier for people to remember one card versus two cards. So again, five of spades and three of spades were selected. Now this packet A, you tell the spectator, I want this card to be lost in the packet. So take packet C, or the original bottom packet, put it right on top, and then take the remaining packet B and put that on top as well. And now at this point, this order cannot be mixed up because if it is, you'll, you'll kind of be screwed. So if you want to take this packet up again and give it a false shuffle or false cut, please feel free to be my guest. I, I think it would kind of sell the effect even more. But what you're pretty much doing now, at this point, it's all performance. How do you want to reveal the cards? You can do kind of what I did in my performance where I'm you know, saying I'm listening for the card and I'll find out exactly what position it's in or, or something like that. And uh, it's, it's actually wild how this works. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to the back of the deck. You're gonna locate spectator one's card first. So as you're going through, you're gonna go to the back third of the deck. Again, you don't exactly know what card uh, they've selected, but in the back third of the deck, you'll see a bunch of spades. And you'll know the card they selected by finding the lowest spade. So if we're taking a look in the back third of the deck, we have uh, king of spades, we have queen of spades, five, 10, jack, six, seven, and eight, and nine. 
So we know the lowest spade is a five, so they selected the five of spades. So what I like to do is once I find their selected card, I like to put it face down on the table. And now, um, like I was saying, you can, you can say, I wanna hear for the position of your card. And as you dribble, if you're very good at doing the dribble, I would, I would recommend doing this method that I'm about to talk about. But if you're not, you can just uh, go with something else that I, that I guess that I, I kind of did in my performance. But if you say, I know the position of the card, all you're going to do to actually find the second selected card is add 10 to whatever value the spectator had. So the spectator uh, picked the five of spades, you're gonna add 10 to it, so it's 15. And now if you take a look, the three of spades is actually going to be in the 15th position from the face of the deck. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Is, isn't that wild? So what I was saying was, if you can dribble, if you, again, I, I can't personally do this, but if you know exactly how to dribble to 15 cards and it just display that card, man, I was really hoping that it would work and I'd flip out. But if you know how you could display that card like that, that would be an insane reveal. But if you want to just like count cards to, till you get to 15 saying, I think I heard the number 15 coming from the cards, you can deal it out and uh, again, reveal the card that way. So three of spades and five of spades. It is insane how great this self-working card trick works. So I hope you enjoyed it. See, didn't I tell you this was worth learning so you could literally perform it immediately? Again, a huge shout out to the card in for sending me these playing cards. I truly appreciate it. And like I said, if you want to buy this deck, I'll put the link to it in the description and make sure to use the promo code card mechanic to get 15% off but only if you want to, or just buy it at full price. That's, that's fine. Anyway, thanks so much for spending your time with me. Love you guys. Have a great day ahead, and I'll see you in the next one. Deck drop.